Hi guys, welcome to Hemoglobin. Today we will be looking at the structure and function of hemoglobin. We will be looking at the differences between hemoglobins in different organisms and the reasons for it. And we will uh, be able to explain what is meant by loading and unloading of oxygen. So, in terms of the spec, uh, we need to know the structure of the hemoglobin and we need to be able to uh, to describe the process of loading and unloading. So, what is the hemoglobin? Hemoglobin is, of course, a protein. It's a quaternary protein. It's made of two alpha polypeptides and two beta polypeptide chains. So, really common past paper questions asking you what is the evidence that hemoglobin has a quaternary structure, tertiary, secondary, or primary structure? So, primary structure. It's a sequence of uh, amino acids in the four polypeptide chains. Secondary structure is the fact that each of those uh, polypeptide chains is coiled into a helix. Tertiary structure, each polypeptide chain is folded into a, a specific shape. And this is the important factor uh, in, uh, in its ability to carry oxygen. And finally, quaternary structure, it's the fact that all four polypeptide chains are linked together and they've got the prosthetic group, the heme group, which contains uh, uh, iron ions. Right, so iron ions then, uh, each of those ions can combine with a single oxygen molecule. So four oxygen molecules can be carried by a single molecule in humans. So we've got four of those heme groups, each of them bind with ion ions. Right, so oxygen in red blood cells is available for respiration, of course, in the respiring uh, tissues. So process of the respiration, of course, requires glucose and oxygen, and the products of it are carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. So imagine the respiration is taking place in the high level. There will be lots of products, so there will be lots of carbon dioxide. This product of respiration that increase carbon dioxide will lower the pH, okay? So... Um, so if there is a low, there is low pH, that means there is a high concentration of carbon dioxide. That means then the oxygen has to be associated uh, from hemoglobin. So the diffusion of oxygen will take place into those respiring tissues. So we call those processes loading and then unloading. So what is a loading? Loading is the process by which hemoglobin binds with oxygen and it takes place in the lungs where there is a high concentration of oxygen. What is then unloading? Unloading is the process by which hemoglobin will then release oxygen and that will take place at the respiring cells, respiring tissues. So... Uh, this process of loading and unloading wouldn't be able to happen uh, without affinity, which is the chemical attraction of hemoglobin for oxygen. So there are two types of this affinity. So it could be high affinity or could be low affinity. So what it's meant by high affinity, it's the fact that uh, hemoglobin uh, can take up oxygen really easily, but release it really hardly. Okay, so high affinity means you're taken on easily. Then the low affinity, it's all the way around. So it's hard to bind with oxygen, but it's really easy to release this oxygen. So if you're thinking about this now, what would be, what would be the high affinity in the lungs or in the respiring tissues? Of course, in the lungs, there's a high concentration of oxygen, so it will be easy to take it on. Well, would be then the low affinity? Well, they need to release oxygen really easily. So there must be somewhere where there is a high concentration of carbon dioxide. So, of course, at the respiring cells. So, what is actually the role then of hemoglobin? Of course, it's to transport oxygen, to associate with uh, oxygen uh, in the lungs where the gas exchange is taking place and dissociate 
uh, from oxygen at the respiring tissues, which we just mentioned before. So, um, in terms of the in terms of the different types of the uh, hemoglobin and different conditions where the uh, where the uh, hemoglobin the people can actually live, this uh, this could be achieved by the specific shape. Okay, in the change of uh, in the change in the presence of carbon dioxide. So the hemoglobin can change its shape because it's a protein, it's a globular protein, and that will result in the adaptations of having either the uh, higher affinity or lower affinity. So just to summarize everything in terms of the affinity and different conditions. So when we are in the lungs, of course, the oxygen concentration is high, but the concentration of carbon dioxide is low. So the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen will be high because it will be easy for hemoglobin to bind with this oxygen. So as a result, we will uh, be looking at loading at the association. But then when we're looking at the respiring cells, the situation is all the way around. So the concentration of oxygen is low, but high concentration of carbon dioxide so of course affinity will be low because we need the hemoglobin needs to dissociate this oxygen unload oxygen so the respiration can take place right so finally different types of hemoglobin so we've mentioned this slightly we did say that uh, hemoglobin can change its shape it's a protein it's a globular protein so uh, they, they, they can do it by different amino acid sequence. So different amino acid sequence refers to the primary structure of the hemoglobin. So if the primary structure of the hemoglobin is changed, that will also change any other structures. So secondary, tertiary and quaternary. So this is why the different oxygen binding properties uh, will be coming from. So why is this taking place? This is taking place because of the huge range uh, between high and low affinity for oxygen. Right? So typical question. The hemoglobin is in one organism might have a different chemical structure from the hemoglobin in another. Describe how, just for one mark. So remember what we say in previous video, the, where is the... The, the original change in the primary structure, so the change of the amino acids, different primary structure. Another question, a decrease in pH, so that means more carbon dioxide of blood plasma reduces the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. What is the affinity? Chemical attraction. If it's reduced, that means low, so that means it's hard to bind but easy to release. Explain how aerobic respiration in cells leads to a change in the pH of blood plasma. So aerobic respiration produces lots of carbon dioxide, which will decrease the pH. Then pH, okay, it's, it's producing our lovely answer. So carbon dioxide, it's a product of respiration. Uh, it uh, decreases the pH, which is said in the stem of the question, so we cannot kind of repeat this, but how this decrease arrives by formation of carbonic acid or re uh, release of hydrogen ions. Thank you.